going to create a bunch of videos for you that explain the mathematics behind COVID-19. I would say by popular demand, or I guess I could say by unpopular demand, since I don't think this illness is very popular. So we're going to begin with discussion of the epidemiological models, which sort of underlie the projections that people make about the virus future cases. And basically, I guess the big question we all have is, it started with one case perhaps in China, how did we get millions of cases in the world tragically? And so we'll start with the most basic epidemiological model, the SIR, Susceptible Infectious Recovered Model. So everybody at any point in time is in this simple model is either susceptible, infectious, or recovered. And once they're recovered, we'll assume they can't get sick again, although we've seen some rare cases of people relapsing, unfortunately. But so far, it's been rare. Hopefully, it'll stay that way. So let's assume there's n people total in the population, let's say 100. And so at any point in time, the number susceptible plus infected plus recovered will equal 100. So let's assume a person encounters k people per day. And of course, we can control that through uh, staying home, lockdowns, social distancing, et cetera. OK, so a fraction s over n, basically, on a given day are susceptible because that takes the number susceptible divided by the total number. And let's assume a fraction pi of all encounters between susceptible and infected people cause new cases. So we'll see in a moment that beta equal pi times k is the disease and uh, transmission rate. OK. So beta is defined as pi times k here. So we've defined pi and we've defined k. So how many new cases would you expect per day? Just assume there's one infected person. OK. So we'll multiply by the i in a minute. So that one infected person will see k people a day. A fraction of those will be infected, s over n. Uh, sorry, susceptible, s over n. And then a fraction of those contacts will result in a new infection. There's a fraction pi of these encounters result in infection. So that's how many new infections you'd expect per day. Now, how do people recover? Let's assume the average time somebody stays infected is 1 over gamma. So a fraction gamma recover each day. And we'll assume uh, basically 1 over gamma is 14. So gamma is going to be 1 14th over here when we plug in the model. Now, how would you find beta? Well, this gets to R0, which I'm sure you've heard of. So we let R0 be beta over gamma, OK, basically. And basically, we sort of know by looking at early data from China and the Diamond, for instance, cruise ship, or there were so no mitigation measures in place that R0 without any controls is between 2 and 3. Well, then we can figure out, if we know R0, we can figure out beta, OK, is R0, beta would equal R0 times gamma. And as you probably know, R0 is the average number of people a sick person will infect. Now, we can control R0 through social distancing, wearing masks, things like that, lockdowns, whatever. OK, so R0 is a moving target, basically. So that, and, and this is under the assumption that basically nobody has the virus, that this S basically is equal to n. So this term is equal to 1 here, that's s over n. So we let r0 be is the average number of people a sick person will infect. If r0 is less than 1, we'll see if the disease dies out. If r0 is greater than 1, the disease will spread. Spell it spreads for That's a new word. OK. And we'll get to the spreadsheet in a minute. But you may have heard of, heard of herd immunity, I guess, coming from cattle. Let F be the fraction that are susceptible. So an average and infected person affects R0 people, and that's assuming that basically everybody's susceptible. But if a fraction F is susceptible, they would infect R0 times F. So if that becomes less than 1, the disease would die out. So for example, if R0 is 3, we need F less than 1 third. OK, that's the fraction susceptible, or 2 thirds have the disease, and they're immune because of that, or they've been vaccinated. And then basically, the disease should die out. Now, again, we can control R0, and that's been the key to what we've been hearing from the government and the scientists. Mass and social distancing can reduce R0 to less than 1. OK, so now let's look at basically a spreadsheet that models this SIR model, and then we'll improve it to the SEIR model, where people can be exposed before they're infectious. And that's what's so dangerous about this disease that makes it spread, because asymptomatic people can spread it. Usually with the flu, I think for one day you can spread it before your symptoms become obvious. But with COVID, we're really not sure. OK, so I named ranges here. 
So you can select this range. You can go formulas create from selection. So this is N. And then of course, this is gamma, this is R0, and this is beta. Now, how did I get beta? See, beta is R0 times gamma. Okay, so if I put R0 in there, I can compute the beta. So basically, these are inputs. And we start with one infected person. Okay, that's the thing that's unbelievable, but it'll be believable, more believable in a moment. So we start with 99 susceptible people and the one infected person. Okay, so now what are the formulas we use here? Okay, you can see them up here. How many are susceptible at day T plus one? The number susceptible at day T, okay, and then basically what happens to the susceptible people to reduce that number? They get infected by this formula right here. So you take S over N, we've got that, times the infected, we've got that. Okay, and then you take beta, which is the pi times K. I almost said beta in there. Okay, so that would be the number susceptible day T plus one. Now, what are the number infected day T plus one? The number infected at day T, but a fraction gamma of those, and we assume that'll be 1 14th here. You can change these numbers if you want and see what happens. We'll look at some changes in a moment. But if you basically make this 1 14th, okay, here, that would mean 1 14th of the infected people, infected people recover. So you have those, a reduction in the number of infected people, but all these people became infected, so you have a plus there. Now, what happens to the recovered people? The number recovered before, so we nobody relapses, okay, plus basically a fraction gamma of the infected people recover, okay, that's basically this part, they go from infected to recover. So we put these formulas in here, and then for new cases, what do we do? So new cases would be the number of susceptible here minus the number of susceptible here. So that's the decrease in the susceptible because they became infected. Okay, so this stuff keeps plunging on, and now again, this is where we've got it, it's going to blow up because R0 is greater than 1. So we start with one person sick, and then we get here, basically, that basically recovered, we're assuming nobody dies here, so almost everybody got it, okay? But after a while, it's, it's going to have trouble, it's going to spread slower because basically the virus will hit people who already had it. So now if we graph this, I, had a, I added a secondary axis for the new cases. Okay, and then I just selected this range, and then I did scatter smooth plot with markers. So you can see this right here. So you do right-click chart type, change chart type. You can see I did scatter with smooth lines and markers, and then there's a secondary axis okay, for the new cases, because it's on a different scale. Okay, so the new cases are going to be the orange here. So it looks big, but it really isn't. But this is what we look at, like every day, how many new cases. And you've seen this curve probably a thousand times in the last, since March of 2020. See, basically, it goes up, and when it starts going up, it's going to go up for a while until we reduce our zero. Then it's going to drop, okay, and we've seen that in the U.S. It dropped in, I guess, June or so. Okay, but then it came back up because the R0 went up because we relaxed our social distancing and our mask wearing. Okay, and then basically, it, we've had three peaks, I think. I mean, we had one in, obviously, March and April, we had uh, or May, and we have one in, depending on the state, July or August, and now I'm making this video in October, and it looks like we're hitting another peak, although each successive peak is, is seeming to be, this peak is seeming to be lower than the August peak, which is good news. So basically, that's our first model. So now I changed R0 to 3 in the next worksheet, which you have available to you, I hope. And so basically, we can see that basically the new cases hit 3 a day instead of 1.5 a, a day. The peak here was 1.4 1, 1 per day. And if R0 is 0.8, okay, I should have said R0, then basically it never gets off the ground. And R0.8 is pretty close to 1. Now with 0.95, what would happen? Okay, it still doesn't really get off the ground. Okay, so let's go back to the 0.8. But if we make this 1.1, okay, then it does get off the ground a little bit there. And then basically we can see what happens there. The susceptible drops there. 
But if I go to like 1.5, 1.8, Okay, then we see we're really getting into trouble there. Okay, I didn't put the new cases there, but we can see that the infected number basically peaks. And then since these people are recovered, we're assuming no deaths here, that basically we can see in 200 days, I only went to 200 days, most people have it. So we'll put this back at 0.8, being hopeful. So I hope that clarifies the basic susceptible, infectious, recovered model. Now, in our next video, we'll make this much more complicated by assuming people can be exposed before they infect people.